So I'm watching around social media and there's been multiple issues in reference to the army parental leave memorandum that's going around that's been around for months already. Stick around. We're going to walk through it. Roger, sorry. All right. So first of all, welcome back to Roger Siren, where we talk all things Army. I'm your host, Siren Cruz, and this is season two. Yes, sir. This is season two. Thank goodness. Thank the gods. All right. So without further ado, we're going to talk about the Army Parental Leave Program or the Army Parental Leave Memorandum. They came out January 4th of 2023. Uh, first thing we're going to discuss is the actual how it's described in the memorandum uh, 23-001. And then we're going to move into how to take parental leave. And then we'll move into the deferral parental leave option. And then we'll talk about what happens to unused parental leaves. Then we'll talk about for reason for extending parental leaves. And what happens in the unfortunate event such as a stillbirth and or miscarriage. Uh, lastly, I'll pull up some small excerpts that I pulled from the article on military.com where they where Army Secretary Christine Warmouth addresses the issues that's going throughout the formations. And this is not the Army. This is military-wide, but we're discussing the Army. All right. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, we're going to look at, um, is... Um, the actual memorandum, and that's on January 4th, 2023. If you're listening on the podcast, listen, I'll walk you through it. Later on, you can go ahead and go to my YouTube channel and you'll be able to see it. Um, but yes, it's titled The Expansion of Military Parental Leave Program. And then you're going to have uh, the it's it's signed and then you're going to have your references in which you're going to derive all your information from other than just the memo. And then you have the responsibilities of the command and everyone who needs to understand this in order to not kind of like deter the 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 operation. Right. Or deter the process. So the first thing is parental leave. What is it? Its effective date is December. I'm sorry. The parental leave is described in this DTM. DTM applies to members when any one of these occurs on or after December 27, 2022. So here we are in June. And I would say six months is ample time to understand the program by now, right? Especially as a leader. So the birth of a member's child, adoption of a minor child by a member, or placement of a minor child with a member for adoption or long-term foster care. Here we are where we're talking about what are the parameters in order to be considered or qualify for parental leave. And then you have the parental leave for birth. Members will be authorized parental leave for the birth of their child and to care for child accordance with paragraph 2B1. And then it talks about the actual procedure. So this is not just for individuals who are giving birth. For instance, if I if my wife gives birth, it's not just for us, too. It's also if I adopt, if I'm going to do long term or short term foster care. So it's not just giving birth. So that's the first thing we have to understand. And then we'll move into taking parental leave. So how do you take it? So members may take parental leave in one continuous period or in increments. Parental leave may be taken together with ordinary leave. So if I want to take my 12, leave, 12 weeks of leave and then I want to come around and say, hey, can I also take another three on top of that? And the commander says, yes, then I have that option. Um, member choosing to take parental leaves in one or more increments, it has to be in blocks of seven, seven days for a maximum of 12, 12 increments. So pretty much you can take one week a month for 12 months and that'll be your 12 weeks worth. 
Now, it's, it, it further says, if the commander disapproves the request, the member may appeal the decision through their normal service procedures. Now, this is just if you're taking the, um, the leave in increments. So what it tells me is they prefer, it would be preferred to take it in one swift motion versus breaking it up, right? And then uh, bullet number two says commanders are encouraged to approve the request for increment periods of parental leave. If the unit commander does not approve taking incremental parental leave, they must allow the member to take the full 12 weeks of parental leave in one continuous motion. Again, it says commanders are encouraged to approve the inc incremental leave. So I think the friction would be more of if I'm trying to take the parental leave in small increments versus the full 12 weeks. And then it has the combined types of leave. Member may take ordinary leave in between increments of parental leave or consecutive with the parental leave. No particular order or sequence of such leave required. So if I want to take a week of parental leave and then I take another five days on top of that, you know, I'll be out for 12 days. I have the option to do that. Or as I said before, that I can take the full 12 weeks and then add on, right? So the next thing is going to be the deferral option of leave. And this is mainly speaking in forward operations, right? If you're, de if you're going deployed or you're going to be deployed or you are deployed. So bullet four, paragraph alpha A says operational, operationally deployed members must normally defer parental leave, right? And it, one second. Yeah. So it says they must defer, normally defer parental leave until their deployment is complete. However, in exceptional and compelling circumstances, unit commander may approve the leave if the commander determines that the unit's readiness will not be adversely impacted. So if you have 600 soldiers and you have three soldiers, for instance, that are requesting parental leave, then would that affect the combat readiness? I would I don't know. I would probably say no, maybe. Who, who knows? It depends on what position they're in, right? If it's an average Joe, I would say maybe, maybe not as much, but it, there are circumstances. We have to look at tanks and, 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 and um, teams and, and cause you, if you, if you have a tank and then you take one member away from that tank, especially the, the driver, then <laughs> that tank is, that tank platoon is now ineffective, right? Because they have to have a certain percentage of tanks rolling out in order for them to be combat effective. So yes, while for the good thing about having Joe is that you have a hundred of them, but that kind of works for details and stuff. But when it comes to combat effectiveness, now we have to take a, 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 a closer look. So it all depends on the mission. So these are things that must be thought of when we're in a forward environment and we're asking to take parental leave and we may be denied. So you have to understand how pivotal your, um, your role is. Like I'm a medic and if I'm in a role one and, and I have all 34 of my medics, if one of my medics goes away, it doesn't hurt me as much because I still have the other medics. I have myself, I have my platoon leader, I have my two P, I have my, my, my PA, my doc, which are pretty much the most pivotal ones. And then I have my beds and I can man those beds and accordingly, right? So it doesn't hurt as much versus when you're talking about the combat side. So this is where the the issue is when it's moving, when, it, when you're in a forward environment. Now, Paragraph Bravo says members who are required to defer parental leave such as the such of such deployments may be authorized an extension of up to one year uh, of up to one year parental leave period as described in paragraph six. So they'd give them a buffer. Yes, you may not be able to see your child when they are born exactly when they're born. And don't get me wrong that I. I got to hold my child when, when he was born, both of them, and that no better feeling. However, they also 
don't kind of like pigeonhole you to that one year. They push it over and you get back. Let's say the child is about four or five months. Yes, it's not the same. However, you still get to take that time off. Um, the next thing is unused parental leave. So unused parental leave. So there are multiple sections within this bullet. However, the one that kind of like resonates a little bit more is the parental leave that is not taken before an extent expiration of, a, of one year from the date of birth of the child, adoption of a minor child by the member, or placement of a minor child with the member for adoption or, or long-term foster care will be forfeited unless paragraph six of this attachment applies, which goes back to the deferment, right? So you have up to one year to take your 12 weeks. Now, again, the next thing is going to be extension of the one year period. So the extension of the one year period for parental leave, a member is authorized to take parental leave after one year period if they would ordinarily lose unused parental leave at the end of the year because of one or more of these conditions. So we're going to talk about the first two. Uh, the first one is a member's participation in a deployment and or military exercise uh, for a consecutive period of 90 days or more within that year. And then the next one is going to be a member's attendance into the in-residence professional military education. So their PME and it's longer than 90 days. So there, there are multiple there are multiple reasons why the, the extension can be approved. Just know that it that there's a way, right? And it's in this memorandum. Um, another thing is, which which is the the most unfortunate, and I don't wish this on on no one, is the leave following a stillbirth and or miscarriage. And this makes it it, it makes sense. Like, I'll I'll read it. In the case when a member experiences stillbirth or miscarriage, the DLD healthcare provider may recommend convalescent leave in accordance with medical practice standards. Now, I'm going to stop there for a second. There's more. I, I read a, I can't remember if it was on, it was on social media. And the soldier was only given maybe two days or something by the doctor, right, for convalescent leave. And it's... It's a medical, it's a medical opinion and or suggestion, recommendation, and the commander complies with it or they don't. However, and, and, and the key point was the, the, the troop was, was upset and I, and I hundred percent understand that the troop was upset. There are, um, avenues of approach to take care of of, of grieving parents, right? And, and it's going to come here. It says, in such cases, neither the member nor the spouse is eligible for parental leave. However, either may be authorized emergency leave. Now, if you look under emergency leave, emergency leave is for immediately fa immediate family. So this would be categorize under that one could argue that because death of a child right so when you miscarry or have a stillbirth you have the it it is a child at the end of the day so you would take your convalescent leave that was approved and then you would have to go into an emergency leave status and although it's not the full 12 weeks because the the, the regulation is the parental uh, leave program. And yes, it sounds a little, a, a little harsh what I'm about to say, so please don't take this the wrong way. You would not be cons under the status of parent, right? You would be under the status of, um, of, a, of a death. And when there's a death in the family, you go under the emergency leave status. That's just the general way the army looks at it, right? Don't get me wrong. Your leaders are going to be very empathetic. I'm empathetic. Your your command is empathetic. Everyone's empathetic for you, but for the for the actual purposes of the program, um, the purposes of the regulation, the purposes of what it was all put in place for, 
that's what we would fall under as troops in the event of this um, this unfortunate event of stillbirth and or miscarriage. So for, for you troops that are in this position, uh, first of all, my condolences. Second thing is, this is the no that this is what you need to know. Don't fight the parental leave program. Check into I'm not not check into um check yeah check into the uh, regulation for the authorized emergency leave. Go into emergency leave status. Take the time you need in order to grieve and and do everything you need to do in order to put the child to rest and get better in order to come back to the formation and um and not be distracted right because you, we're going to need time on such a such an event right. So these are mainly the things that I'm seeing that are that that are issues that are issues within the formation. And I'm I'm seeing a lot of the um, the social media that they just they just get the they're getting pressured by the command to actually the issue is that the command is wanting them to break it up, like kind of like, hey, do you want to take the the full time or you want to break it up? So it seems like they're forcing them to break it up when they don't have to. Right. The intent is. Oh, dear. The intent is for you, the soldier, to take your 12 weeks bond with the child, assist your significant other, your spouse in taking care of the the child, because your spouse at that point point is at a very um uh, i wouldn't say just vulnerable but they need as much assistance as they can so this is put in place for that so the next thing i want to bring up is an article that was written on may 26 of this year and it's titled army secretary to remind commanders that they cannot deny soldiers parental leave and this is on military.com it says Army Secretary Kristen Warmoth, or is it Christine Warmoth, plans to issue a service-wide reminder that soldiers are broadly entitled to parental leave and that and that the time off can be denied only by a general. So no commander, there's no such thing at the command level. The memo comes after military.com in recent months interviewed Two soldiers who say their unit broke service rules by denying their parental leave or otherwise making it difficult or having them jump through unnecessary hoops when the leave is now in in effect. I apologize. Having them jump through unnecessary hoops when the new leave is effectively guaranteed. Other soldiers have also raised similar comments complaints on social media in recent weeks, which is what I'm talking about. Company level army leadership has virtually no authority whether new parents can take 12 weeks of 12 weeks of leave. So <laughs> again, um, it's it's just it's just unfathomable that we can't just abide by the guidelines. Like put these soldiers on leave status and 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 call it a day. You knew that their spouse was pregnant months in advance, and this is what we do. We forecast. We have long-range training calendars, short-range training calendars. We have troops to tasks. We have all these all these tools that we use in order to for, forecast training. Why are we not forecasting training minus this troop in order to, like, accommodate or give them their right right so if you know that the troop may have to shoot gunnery around that time then maybe that 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 gunnery needs to be moved over pushed to the side and or um just have them shoot with a different company right if you know that they that there's some type of um exercise training exercise that's going to be coming up let's say um e3b or something like that right the expert field medical badge soldiers badge and infantry badge and that's going to happen and you need maximum participation then don't count with that troop 
if you know that there's any type of taskings coming, then you shouldn't count with that troop. And if you're worried about their their matrixes and you're on red cycle, then maybe you should knock those out prior to them leaving. Right. So there are multiple ways in order to accommodate for these troops without actually violating their rights. And it's super discouraging and boy, it's just annoying, to be honest with you, because we are leaders and we know better at the end of the day. We know what we're doing when we sit there and we and we have these soldiers, as it says, jump through unnecessary hoops when the new leave is effectively guaranteed. Like, what are we doing? Like we're we're being counterproductive leaders. That's the bottom line. And that and, and it just has to stop. This bleeds into like this goes onto military.com. There are some parents, there are some uh, future recruits that are reading these articles that this is how they keep their ear to the sh- to the army streets. And if they're reading this, why would I why would I want to join? You know what I mean? So the last part is says um, one spouse of the soldier told military.com in April that they would not have challenged their command's decisions to withhold or significantly delay parental leave due to fear of retaliation. The spouse said the soldiers was prepared to accept whatever service offered, whether it was in line regulate with regulations or not. Um, and that doesn't surprise me. That doesn't surprise me not one bit because at the end of the day, like what, what is private crews going to do? What is Sergeant crews going to do? Shoot. What is staff sergeant crews going to do like this? Like when, when, a, a when a first sergeant or a sergeant major sits, stands in your face and they just buck their chest out, you're not really going to do too much, right? You don't want, you don't want that smoke. Not nine times out of 10 troopers don't want that smoke. So they're just going to, they're just going to roll over. And at the end of the day, if you're making your troops roll over and you're just to get your way and you know, for a fact, you're violating it, it's, it's wrong. And another thing, just because you in your time didn't get this benefit doesn't mean that others shouldn't. That's called evolution. We are learning. Um, let's go back to back in Vietnam era. Those um, veterans, they didn't get all their benefits, but we are. I bet you as a leader, when you retire, you expect your benefit. So why why should you get your benefit if those guys didn't get their benefit? Because a lot of times it's like that. It's, well, I didn't get a chance to do this. I've, I've, I've heard this numerous times. Soldier goes to the board. Hey, help your soldier. Well, I studied by myself when I did it, so why should I help them? You know, just it's, it's just that thought process that's counterproductive. So I challenge all leaders to, to evolve with the times. Get with the times. If you, you can't talk about how soldiers are, are, are spoiled and brats and stuff like that, when you're doing the same thing, you're essentially throwing a rank tantrum. I and I didn't get it when I was um, born or when I was there, when my child was born. So no one's going to get it. And I have the rank to do it. So I'm going to throw a tantrum and that's it. That's just my humble opinion. So at the end of the day, um, we when we when we talk about this, um, this parental leave program, it's imperative. I think it's, the, it's one of the best things that the army has done. It, it, it shows that we care. It shows that we're trying to kind of like pair off with, what, with with the civilian world, which they're trying to also do. And all many of these progressive countries are doing it, right? Let's say, for instance, I, I, I was stationed in Germany for about nine years of my career. And I know for a fact that when, when uh, in the civilian sector, when a woman has a child, they're gone for up to an amount of months until they get back and their job is secure. Let's do the same. Oh, I'm sorry. We are doing the same. Let's accommodate and not make this difficult for all the troops. So in conclusion, let me get off my soapbox. Commanders and leaders must understand the intent. The intent is to allow the soldier maximum time to either bond with their child, help their um, significant other, and or take the time off in order to just be with their child. Right. Uh, the next thing is soldiers must read and know their rights. Troop, you have to know what the actual regulation or the memo says. You can 
probably you can spout out, spout out what someone else is saying, but you also need to read it, which is why we're doing this. So now you know exactly where to find it. And then the last thing is um, leaders have to adapt to change. We as leaders we must adapt to change. The army is going to come out with a bunch of new things like we already saw, saw the tattoo, the earrings, the black socks. I mean, so many things that the army is just accommodating with, with, with the general troop. And we just got to get with the times at the end of the day. That's it for today's episode of the Roger Sarm Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review the podcast. You can also like and subscribe on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram at Roger underscore Sarnt. You can friend me on Facebook at Roger Sarnt. And lastly, you can follow me on TikTok at Roger Sarnt. If you have any suggestions for the show, you can email me at rogersarnt at gmail.com. Until then, this is Sarnt Cruz signing off the net. And don't forget, you don't have to embrace the suck if you got the right tools in your ruck. Roger Sarnt!